Amy Meverak is from Natick, and she is a poet and an author. She has performed poetry and competed in poetry slams in New York at the New Yorican Poets Cafe, at the Cantab Lounge, the Lizard Lounge, the Dirty Gerund, Gallery 55. And uh, she has been the uh, slam poet winner over in Natick for the annual competition in the last two years. Amy says about her poetry that her poems are not soft and pretty, they are hard and striking, like stones, like truth, and every time I stand at the microphone, I am David giving it to Goliath. She is also an author. She's picture, published fiction, poetry, book reviews, and restaurant reviews under her former name, Amy Carr. She has worked as editor for the Hudson Review in New York City and for Books of Hope in Somerville. Amy has also conducted poetry workshops and slams in schools and church communities. And when asked for a most memorable moment in the work that she does, bringing poetry to community, Amy said it was inspiring fifth and sixth graders at Millis Middle School to open up and share their poems. Poems about hope, love, faith, fear. And sloths. And what? And sloths. And sloths, okay. <laughs> With 200 of their peers. What is consistent uh, for Amy with poetry, it seems, is giving voice to others. And in a quote, she said, I use poetry to amplify the voices of the unheard, to bring truth to light, to inspire, and to connect. And with that, I would like you to join me in welcoming Amy Meverick. For I didn't write a poem. You see, I've got four kids. That's right, and the little one didn't sleep last night. So I didn't write a poem. I didn't have time, but I can rhyme off the top of my head, bed said dead Fred, because I have read Dr. Seuss thousands of times in the past eight years. I didn't write a poem, but I speak poetly, if not fluently, then enough to get by. I used to sigh and think, am I a poet? Now I know it. I know I am a poet because my tale of suffering ends in strength. I know I am a poet because I dare to speak my truth even though it contradicts history. I know I am a poet because I'm here holding a microphone and speaking in a syncopated rhythm punctuated by sharp intakes of breath. I know I am a poet because I pause to listen to silence. So that was a poem that started um, after a, a break of about six years when I, I was just raising my kids and not writing poetry. And it started where I was. I hadn't written a poem. And it, it moved me to a place where I had written a poem. So it's, I've been very grateful for all the things that poetry can do. Um, and this is another poem that starts, it starts where I am. And I, I wrote this for the, um, the fifth and sixth graders at Millis Middle School um, before I did some workshops with them. Um, it's about the fear of performing. Because I think uh, no matter how many times you get up in front of people, you know, you feel the fear. And I wanted to let the kids know that that's, that's normal and there's no way around it. You just have to feel it, be present with it. The tingly nerves alighting, throat tightening, brain fighter flighting, feet want to flee because you're looking at me with my, my tongue shaking, smile faking, knees quaking, intestines snaking, lungs aching, heart breaking, heartbeat like a drumbeat symphony of orchestration aligned with a higher vibration, a more complex registration of my true voice's intonation. Um, 
Dorothy Bernard said, courage is fear that has said its prayers. <laughs> I believe fear is just wings that don't know they can fly. Do caterpillars dream of when they will shed this tight skin and begin life again in a higher dimension? When we shake with fear, we learn to beat the air and rise, rise, rise. Okay, so as I said, um, Dr. Seuss is seriously one, one of my big influences, and, um, and so is Margaret Wise Brown. Um, she wrote Goodnight Moon, Runaway Bunny, the friendly book. Um, and this is a poem I, I wrote at a time when I was reading one of her books, um, Home for a Bunny, about four or five times a day. Um, so you can, you can maybe see her influence in that. I like rivers. Even more, I like streams. I like the way they flow in one direction and rest and go, surge when the rain fills and excites them, and in sunshine gives the, give themselves up in steam to the hot sky. I like how rivers turn and travel, cutting grooves in earth, making room for more rain to move together, making mud, mixing, loosening, making moist what was hard, and running alongside me, showing fallen pieces of the sun, leaves pasted to the surface, then ducking under a tree and revealing what is beneath, the river bottom rocks and sneaking fish. I like the way rivers know which way to go. They have made their choice to flow. I like rivers. I want to be more like a river. River, I like how you travel with turbulence and joy, humor and depth, and a road has to contend with you when it wants to have its way. <laughs> Okay, this is called The Starving Artist. He boiled oats at dawn and took a risk with salt, aimed an arc across his bowl where butter glossed a crease of tawny malt. Satisfied with white-hatched, stippled bisque, the artist paused, savoring his roll. Then, voraciously, his tongue touched salt. With puckered eyes and catching throat, he choked down his pollock, oat by oat. <laughs> good neighbors. Do fences make good neighbors? Or do cookies? Does cooking out together feel better than looking out, wondering whether those people passing from house to car would venture far enough to meet me in my abode? And am I too chicken to cross the road? I'll be honest, most of the time, I don't know what to do. I'll greet your dog before I say hello to you. I may think you don't want to share. You live there and I live here. These voices come from fear. It isn't clear on the street what it would mean for us to meet and not just greet. I'd have to ask, could you lend me a hand, an egg, a sander, sometimes be a borrower, sometimes a lender, no money exchange, no reason to barter, generous giving, grateful receiving, harmonious living keeps us believing in the power of human connection. When we connect in the most high-tech way of all, the interaction of living, moving, loving bodies, Spirit, flesh, and bone is more magical than an iPhone. We can't understand how grand our capacity for communication has been planned. What we know is only one strand in an infinite weave, and even when we grieve, we will be relieved if we come to each other, like sister and brother, for comfort and company, community, unity. We will find relief from the toil and anxiety of the society's fear or pitch, the tug of war of poor and rich. So before you say life's a labor, bring a daffodil to your neighbor. Sorry, it's been a while, but I'll take a risk to see you smile. To really meet, we have to conspire together, meaning breathe together, waste time together, 
So time does not keep wasting us. Do fences make good neighbors? So sometimes it's, it's funny to watch the poems grow. It's sort of like they're seeds of different poems and they sprout up and you never know what, what's going to come out of it. And I'm, um, for some reason, there was a period of time where three poems I was writing had this chicken crossing the road um, in it. So <laughs> that's my connection to this, this poem. Um, this is about um, living in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. The doorman let me into the courtyard. I sat by the koi pond and listened to a white-haired woman explain how her international entrepreneurial success had made her feel comfortable in her own skin. I nodded but did not ask, how could you be uncomfortable in your skin if your skin is sitting by the koi pond in moonlight receiving a glass of sangria from the tanned hands of a koi young woman in a koi colored dress? How could you be uncomfortable in your own skin if you own because of your skin? I listened but did not own up to where I lived before I got a break and could afford to be bored by the rich and fake. Halfway between Eastern Parkway and bed I caught somebody's eye. Somebody on a stoop pissed to see me, hissed at me. See why I'm staring at my feet with a beat of Run DMC in my ears, my fears beating my blood as I walk the street for something to eat, like a meat patty or jerk chicken. Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Because I feel I am not enough, territorial braggadocio is my bluff for confidence. So nobody knows I am chicken every time I cross the street. In Crown Heights, I walk home nights and early mornings in spite of warnings from police and other white people. Let me help you change that tire. This is not a place you want to get stuck. What the? I live here. I didn't get stuck. I can leave any time and come back with grant money to teach poetry to underserved communities, which is only a typo away from undeserved. The error lies less in typography than in political geography. No, my, nobody tells me my hood is nice. No Caucasian will visit me twice, but the women around me keep me from harm. Lily downstairs pinches tight on my arm, drags me from the street. He's packing heat, she says, alarmed. Don't talk to the dealers, the wheelers, the stealers, or the feelers. But she does not say the rappers. One day, as I pass the men who pay, play chess, I am tracked. I become white, and a man becomes black, and opposites attract, so he follows me home. Afraid of being attacked, I walk alone until my friend Smoke comes out of an alley and says, hey, you got yourself a tail. The gentleman slides behind me like a bishop taking the queen and says, oh, you like white girls too. Smoke replies, this ain't no white girl. This is Amy. He's the only one in the neighborhood who can name me beyond white girl, cotton, or snowflake. Smoke is a rapper, and where cultures intersect, poetry connects. At Mrs. B's table, I count cash for my rent and stare at her carving of the serenity prayer, wonder what it means to her. Mrs. B says, I'm glad we had you here. We never had any problems, did we, dear? No, no problems, I keep to myself. Don't talk with a young man who glances up and down the block, his head like a pendulum on a clock, his time on earth going tick, tick, tock. Any moment he could die or be cuffed. Emotions must be stuffed. At sunset, a mother unclips laundry from the line and calls her son home to bed. Messiah! Messiah! Some nights, when the lights are dead, I hear women scream like their boys ain't never coming home again. There's a church on the corner. Every Sunday night, when the sky changes into evening attire, pained hearts harmonize with a joyful choir. I long to line up and go in 
but I wear my sin like a stain on my skin, and I wear my skin like I want to go home and change. What if you didn't like my tint? What if I couldn't take a hint? Would you flick me away like a piece of lint? Or like dandruff, brush me off the shoulder of your smooth black jacket. Here's another poem that, um, that addresses race. It's called Parched. I want to love you, but I see parchment in your skin. And I am parched for the memory of ignorance, the memory of bliss. Before I knew the difference, before I knew this, that people who look like you took people like me to an island and left them to starve and freeze to death. Or worse, watch their fathers and mothers and children, sisters and brothers, starve and die. Why would you do that when every breath is there for you without you having to ask? Always and everywhere there, and not only breath, but guidance and love from the great spirit who is your creator too. And if it wasn't you, when the original sinners are dead, who can I hate? only someone who looks like them, like you. Didn't we have to bear their children because our men had died? And now, in my face, parchment has taken the place of buffalo skins, bark, and wampum. My ancestors looked like a tanned hide, and it's hidden in me, papered over and over and over, because my great-grandmother took a lover who came from the sea, and by her own tribe, rejected as one who defected from the true race of brothers and sisters under the great Wakantanka, because they internalized the divisions that were given to them in exchange for everything Wakantanka gave for free. Like the trees, the homes of our friends turned to parchment. You came reading the scrolls with your rules on our playing field. If you played our game, you may have been healed. I'm a person, and I called myself a person until you came and called us another name, called us Indian and Native and American. And haven't we become what you said we were just because you kept saying it? Don't we have to play your game just because you keep playing it? And now at the powwow, we sell factory-made moccasins and the Grand Squaw Sachem wears Crocs. The only way to survive your game is to sell the stereotypes of our culture. So you can wear feathers and leathers and beads without knowing the taste of American government cheese or the taste of exile, the flavor of genocide. Do you have the guts to skin that hide? So now, I look at you and wonder who is going to apologize to whom. We are one and the same. This poem is coming from the mouth of a white person. These feelings are burning the heart of a white person. And I look in the mirror and say to pale skin, there you go again, exploiting our culture. To win. Okay, so just a couple more minutes, right? So um, I'll close with um, with this one. It's called Perfect Time. Meet the Clarks. We are a family of four. One, two, three, four. With a dog, two, three, four. And a white picket fence for keeping out the neighbors. One, two, three, four. Every year we send a Christmas card to all of our relatives. We have no friends. 
And we like it that way for mommy hides the bottles in the kitchen, in the laundry, in the closet, and back of the stairs. One, two, three, four fingers of vodka once or twice a day. Or three or four, it's five o'clock somewhere in the world. Not here. So what? Daddy draws lines in the bottles, and oh, does it make him mad? Watch out for Dad. <gasps> Look at the picture of the four of us. We're happy. See, we're smiling. See, our son is a Boy Scout, and he likes girls and football cars and shooting guns, and he plays trombone in the band. Our daughter wears dresses trimmed with lace and braids. Not one hair out of place. Not one. Not one. Not one. Two, three, four. Smile for the camera. Mother should be a beauty queen or a model out of L.L. Bean. We never miss a birthday, Easter, Mother's Father's Halloween or Valentine's Day. Send a card, wrap a gift with a corner square and the pattern on the wrapping paper lined up. It's a perfect gift. It's a perfect fit. Get away from me, you little. <gasps> We're a perfect home. Never angry or alone. Watch out for dangers. Don't talk to strangers. Cover up blemishes, sins, and age. Stay inside to avoid any triggers for unspent rage. Put the dog in the cage. You'll never find my stash. <gasps> Pull the smile tighter, 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 taut like the skin and the drum in the marching band. Boom, 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 crash. Help me. I'm not perfect. Thank you. Throw, throw, throw. Throw words down onto paper. I'll throw words like a man in a mob throws stones at a sinner. Like middle school boys in a snowball fight, I will pack and hurl as hard and as fast as I can, not caring who gets hit. I'll throw words onto paper like Hurricane Bob stung me with sand when I wanted to see what it was like to be on a beach during high winds. Like the big unit hitting a pigeon flying in front of home plate, my words will explode something before they even get to their target. My words, my words, my words, 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 words do break bones. I'll break your bones with my words. I'll crack your skull with a pleasurable sound of crack, skull, crack. <coughs> Not KKK, but the sensual blend of k and sk and the lull of ull. Sound is power. Words are power. I love you, not. You are a hateful, dirt-looking plebeian. Words are power. I do love you. In a snow-filled winter, you are the memory of sunshine caught in the cups of red tulips. You are the warm sand under my feet and the salt water swirling around them. Words create feelings. I hope you die in your sleep tonight. I hope you live and find your way to make the world a better place. Words are powerful winds. Words are pebbles making ripples in a pond. Art is rocks. Make art. Throw rocks. As I was walking through the wood, I met the man beneath the hood who said to me, Your time has come. Your deeds have all been done. Although you never quit the fight, you never seem to get it right. I said, just give me one more chance. Have you ever seen me dance? <laughs> I clicked my heels and pirouette while thinking of a girl I met who longed to be my one true love. Alas, I wasn't ready yet. I spin into an arabesque, which really puts me to the test, but those sad eyes distract me so, I can't remember what comes next. So desperately I look around, I leap, I fall, I kiss the ground. But somersault back to my feet, then bow and wave my jester wand. The grim reaper shook his head. Although he never quit the fight, you never seem to get it right. I said, just give me one more fling. Have you ever heard me sing? I sing a song of sixpence with a pocket full of innocence and a history of hopeless dreams strung out like a picket fence. I sing with soul, I sing with ease. My voice goes winding through the trees. A mockingbird picks up the tune. 
I'll take requests now, if you please. I think about that girl next door and whether she'll return once more. I waltz right through the last refrain. Now I'm ready for my first encore. The Grim Reaper shook his head. Although you never quit the fight, you never seem to get it right. I said, just give me one more go. Have you ever caught my show? I'll do anything for you. Perhaps a ribald joke or two. No need to be so grim, my friend, as I pull a rabbit from my shoe. My wand becomes an ivy vine, which I water with a glass of wine and watch it grow 14 feet long. Now grab an end. What's yours is mine. You're not at all like what they say. The reaper turns his face away. I'll sew these bells upon your hood. Just let me live another day. The grim reaper smiled and said, uh, Although you never quit the fight, you never seem to get it right. But I like you, fool. You make me weep. So I'll take you in your sleep. <laughs> Thank you. Just one thing on my bucket list, to feel your hand to hear your voice when it's time to face the dark. Thank you.